Concrete Construction is America's leading building industry magazine. It is published by Honeywood Media, who also staged the World of Concrete in Las Vegas. Every year, the publishers honor the five most influential persons in the industry. The distinction goes to people who significantly further the industry through their work. In 2015, the award went to Rolf Spahr for his successful work with the ACI, the American Concrete Institute, specifically its Technical Committee 347 on Form Work for Concrete. The ACI is regarded as the leading global institution in the concrete construction industry and is represented in 100 countries across the globe. Rolf Spahr has been head of MIFA Formwork System Sales Operations in Germany since 1988 and in addition spearheaded the company's development in North America. Rolfspar started in the construction industry as an apprentice bricklayer. Um, it's good to start near the bottom. That's a good place. <laughs> he is now and has been for some time director of sales for Meva's Formwork Systems. Um, he said Formwork is a special part of the construction concrete business, but it's used in all parts. A few years ago, he got involved in the American Concrete Institute's Formwork Committees. After looking at the various guides and documents such as ACI 347 and 301 and 117, he realized that there was no clarity on the subject of surface texture. His goal was to define the various aspects of a form surface, and the result was the new ACI 347.3 Guide to Form Concrete Surfaces. Now, this document may not be perfect yet, as some people have pointed out, but it's a great starting point, and I think it's, a, it's something that's going to make a difference in our business. Um, Ralph said, it will take some time to gain experience with this, but I believe it will put contractors in a better position with the architect or engineer. It will push people to sit together as a team. Talking together is always the best way. For pushing us a step further, Ralph Spar is one of this year's most influential people. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to Concrete Construction and its team, to Henley Wood. It was a real, it's a real great honor for me to Give you a little bit background. I was sitting uh, on a Saturday uh, at lunchtime together with my wife when I got this email from Bill. I could not even believe it. But um, also, thank you to the ACI 347 committee. Maybe some uh, members uh, are around in the public. We have done that over the last seven years. We started that because we were uh, convinced that it will drive the industry forward. And uh, with this guide, we'll have a, a, a summary and a, a basis for understanding what does it mean if an architect says, I would like to have this and this uh, uh, um, um, surface, and uh, for the contractors, how to, uh, how to reach that surface with texture, with facing and construction shines, with color uniformity, and tackling all these uh, things. Have a look into that, and uh, we will step forward from that. And will, I'm sure it will, it's a good basis for the industry. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The Concrete Conference 2015 is part of an educational campaign launched by MEFAS Formwork Systems in cooperation with the American Concrete Institute with the aim of reaching an international professional audience on the new ACI Guide to Formed Concrete Surfaces. The conference was held in the Armani Hotel in the Burj Khalifa in Dubai on Monday, November 23, 2015. Around 80 guests from around the world met to hear keynote speaker Rolf Spahr, who spearheaded the guide and was honored as one of the five most influential persons in the concrete construction industry in the USA. The major table so I will uh, explain that a little bit, is used um, as a description of the form concrete surface category, as you could see, as you can see over here, it's the one CSC1, CSC2, CSC3, CSC4, and then another description, what does it mean, what, uh, from concrete surfaces, use my glasses, with low visibility up to concrete surface where exposed concrete is a prominent uh, feature of the completed structure. 
And deriving from that, CSC1, CSC2, CSC3, CSC4, and I'm using uh, tonight this example, we have got, we talk about the texture, we talk about the surface void ratio, we talk about color uniformity, we talk about surface irregularities, it's a difficult word, we talk about construction and facing joints, mock-ups, form-facing categories. Imagine how much different kinds of form work, how much different kinds of form-facing you have, we have to use uh, and to produce buildings and the cost, the related cost at the end. And if you could see, with a CSC1 service level, we wrote uh, it's low cost, and with a CSC4, it's very high cost and it could range easily from 1 to factor 4 to, four to factor 5 uh, uh, compared to the lowest one. So the deriving features are described from the surface categories in visible effects, form facing categories and so on as I mentioned before. And I would like to use an example just to give you a little bit more uh, features and a little bit more information uh, hopefully easy to understand uh, how this guy works. It's a building made in Germany a couple of years ago. The building was designed for a CSC4 classification. Famous architect, I hope, uh, I guess most of you uh, at least heard of uh, the Japanese architect Tadao Ando. And uh, as I mentioned, just uh, I would like to, to use this example uh, to introduce the new guide to you and using CSC4 uh, to uh, give you the links uh, to the table and to the guide. Let's start with the description of the visible effects. In most of the cases people talk about voids and uh, buckholes and all these things. That's not the most interesting thing. Of course, if we have got a wall with uh, lots of buckholes, you'll see that later on, it doesn't look nice, so we have to do something. Maybe it's even not accepted. But the major thing are the visible effects, and we start with the texture. Texture, texture describes the, the gaps, the depth of mortar loss, uh, surface offsets, projections, <coughs> imprints of modular frames, or even in any other imprints. And let me go back from this texture to our example. We have got a CSC4, that's what we mentioned before. Now we have got uh, the column with the texture. Now CSC4 means we are, we have to consider uh, the T4 requirements. And what this means, so let's go back to this table. You will see this is the description of the visible effects with T4. Just go in, texture, panel joints, and it uh, describes the formwork should be grout tight, avoid uh, mortar leakage, and correct wear of course, permissible, permissible surface of offsets, uh, as discussed before, the tolerances, form facing material, what is uh, possible, what is not possible, imprints of module frames are unacceptable, and so on and so on. Visible effects, just an example. I guess nobody would accept as a uh, CSC4 and T4, what I mentioned uh, a minute ago, that uh, a visible effect, effect uh, projection like that on a concrete surface would be acceptable because it's avoidable. It takes time, it costs money to to clarify or to, to, uh, to repair or even to use another kind of panel but it's not accepted for this high-end uh, concrete design. Let's have a look to the surface wide ratio and once again we'll go back to the table Back to the basic table, and again 
we are in CSC4, as we decided before. We go into the next column, surface void ratio, and we have got SVR4 and SVR3. Why this uh, difference? You see here it's A and NA, which means using absorbent material is a little bit different from using non-absorbent material. And you will see that uh, on, a, on an example how this works. So we measure the void area, the allowable percentage of voids, and we talk about suggested concrete placement practices to avoid getting too much voids. Use of release agent is very important, very, very important. Vibration, concrete mixture, concrete mix. So considering an SCC mix today, I would like to say that uh, SCC mixes, uh, we don't uh, even, I guess nobody of us understands what's really inside. It's a chemical mixture, it's a great material, but we have to understand how it behaves. Consistency and mock-ups. So, and going back, uh, or going into the next uh, table, you will see once again, we have uh, seen SVR3 and I take SVR4, and it's uh, detailed, there is a detailed description provided to uh, tell the contractor uh, what to consider, what to take care of, and so this guy helps mainly the contractor and the people producing this S-Cast finishes to go through uh, in a very detailed manner. That's a, an example out of that building of Tadao Ando. It's a museum in Germany. I think uh, it's a great service uh, which we have in front of us. Going a little bit more detailed into that surface, you see or from another part there is a concentration of small voids in some area. So what do you mean? Uh, would this be acceptable or not acceptable for a high-end concrete? What would you do? Would you accept it or not accept it? Let me have an idea. I know it's difficult, but the major thing and uh, why I ask this question is this guide, the surface wide ratio, is only required or determined to be determined, and this is uh, important for all contractors, if the entire impression of the surface does not meet the contract expectations. And not each and every surface void has to be uh, taken away. That's not, uh, that's not doable. Let's have a look to the entire building again. Viewing distance, usually 6 meters minimum, 20 feet uh, is described in, in this guide, or even more. It depends if you are in a staircase, you are closer to the wall. If you see the entire building, like here, you are a little bit more in a distance. So the entire impressions of the surface meets or met the contract expe expectations, even if we have seen such small irregularities uh, which from this distance nobody could even uh, realize. Let's have another picture. You have seen this nice great building of the Vienna uh, University, uh, of the Eco University of Economical Science and uh, it's going to a staircase fully done in S-cast concrete with some area of higher amount of voids. Once again in this lower area, well, it's relative if it's a higher amount of voids, but uh, compared to the other areas, it's a little bit more. But the entire impression of that whole staircase is great, and the architect was Saha Hadid, which is a very critical architect for quality, very critical, and uh, she accepted that, and uh, I don't know if we have got some architects uh, between, between us, uh, but let me say that from my experience, most of the architects do not want to have an absolutely perfect surface because it's not doable. They want to have a great surface which is desired, but uh, they don't want to have 
even if there are some imperfections, that's not the problem, if the entire surface looks good. But usually an architect does, doesn't want to have any repairs on such uh, buildings or such structure. If we started, would have started repairing this, uh, it would have destroyed the entire uh, impression. On the top you see a mock-up, which is also a very important thing uh, to build. Uh, and the test of release agent used for, uh, here in this case, a color concrete surface. We have seen today a couple of uh, such buildings with such, uh, canes, with such uh, requirements. Left, we had a very high amount of whites. At the beginning, uh, nobody knew why. On, on the right side, a very low amount of whites. It's because of the release agent, nothing else. The same contract concrete was used, the same formwork facing was used. Same thing if you are going into a slab, remember the nice uh, slab, uh, slabs you have seen before from the projects over here. Different kinds of laminated plywood. Now plywood is wood, it's a good material, uh, but uh, the innovation steps forward, so we have got better material. If we have got different kinds of lamination, so you will see this as a visible effect. And this leads us into color uniformity. And I would say uh, all fair-faced concrete or uh, concrete in high-end uh, expectations is the biggest uh, discussion how to reach uh, color uniformity. How to reach a constant color uh, over a whole building, over a period, over different, uh, with, with dif different temperature, with uh, different uh, circumstances and so on, different temperature. So we go back to the table. We have got CSE4. We are in the column of color uniformity. Once again, absorbent, non-absorbent. And uh, we have got CU2 or CU3. What does that mean? This means and I hope you can read it, CU3. Discolorations caused by concrete source material of different type in origin, different types or treatments of facing materials or inconsistent treatment of concrete surfaces are unacceptable. So a clear statement what is doable and what is not doable. Rust stains, dirt stains and visible pouring layers are unacceptable. I know this is nearly not doable. If you have, got, uh, you have got a lot of sand over here, on each and every side we have dust, and uh, if you've got rain, if you have uh, put uh, or prepared a mat uh, forming uh, material and you put on release agent, the release agent, the dust uh, sticks to the release agent, we have got a problem, so it means preparation. The difference between absorbent form-facing material and non-absorbent form-facing <coughs> material, I think it, the, best, the best thing is to show a slide, to show an image how this looks like in the real world, and not to describe it in words. The absorbent form-facing material takes out water and gives a darker, uh, light darker uh, surface, whereas uh, the non-absorbent form-facing material like uh, plastic material and high-end, uh, yeah, well, any plastic material, even if it's all done uh, late on uh, plywood, uh, creates a, a light gray color constantly. So, according to the desired concrete surface from the architect, the contractor has to choose the appropriate material. It's his task. Form-facing materials should be of consistent type. That's what we learned uh, a minute ago. And we uh, can see here at least five, six, or even seven different kinds of plywood, which was just available on the market. But it will also create, not always, but mostly, uh, different kinds of color in the concrete itself. Another thing is pouring legs. Very important, not mostly uniform, required by CO2 or CO3 or phenolic decay. 
uh, with ultraviolet uh, uh, rays, uh, like it, uh, you could see it with this brown, uh, brown uh, material on the concrete. It does not disappear. It, it looks just, yeah, let me say, kind of ugly. Another thing we have to talk about is uh, color uh, deviation with black spots. Maybe you have seen that, if you have got big nail holes using uh, nails which are too big, uh, as a result of bleeding cement parts through these nail holes, you get black dots. If they are, in some cases, no problem at all, nobody will realize it or talk about it. But if concentrated, like it's here, and uh, some part of the, out of this image seen here, uh, nobody will nobody will accept. It. So it's just to talk about what we have to take care of in the production of um, such kind of concrete. You remember we talked about rust stains before, color uniformity deviations. So this is really a deviation. It's not an irregularity. It's a deviation. It's the result of not. It's of used and not repaired plywood, or not, uh, it's repaired plywood, but not uh, very well done repaired plywood. By the way, each and any repair of plywood is visible on the, uh, later on concrete surface, each and every. So it's a low category, which we find here. Or on the left side, just to give you some examples to the uh, theoretical part, there is far too much release agent. And this is a phenomenon that uh, many people do not understand that we don't need as much release agent as possible. We need as less uh, release agent as possible. Swipe it away. If you, have, if you put release agent to the formwork, swipe it away and uh, this will be uh, the best possibility. On the right side, rust stains, uh, I don't have to explain that even further. That's an interesting picture. Um, well, this is what you have got uh, here, a circumstance which you have got here, surely not. Because it's done uh, in cold weather uh, with uh, temperatures around uh, zero centigrade and, uh, and below. And on the right side, uh, the contractor used cold aggregates, cold sand, cold aggregates. And uh, then uh, we found out uh, that this discoloration, this dark coloration, uh, was caused because uh, of uh, the unheated um, uh, aggregates. So the aggregates were heated to approximately 60 degrees, which means about, I would say, 20 degrees uh, centigrade, 18 to 20 degrees centigrade, and uh, the discoloration was gone. So also the concrete is very important, not only the formwork, mostly it's the concrete and uh, the, re the release agent together. Going shortly into the surface irregularities, once again, and I don't think that uh, I have to do it uh, any longer, you understood uh, the way how this works. We have got CSC4 once again, the surface irregularities column, you see this means SI4 and SI4, once again, means talking about tolerances, class A surface, maximum gradual deviation over so and so, five feet is uh, one eighth of an inch or three millimeter, limit deflection, so it's, uh, it's a talk about uh, deviations and deflections. Just uh, giving you an example, which might be not uh, acceptable at all for something like that. Not, no, my, it's not acceptable at all. Construction and facing joints, once again, the same thing. Uh, as you see, CU4, it's described uh, very detailed offset of surfaces, chamfer strips, joint locations, and uh, all this stuff. And once again, construction and facing joints, the architect has to describe Whatever, whenever he describes it better, uh, the contractor has got a chance to do uh, it much better. We have got chalk built gang forms with plywood facing as seen before. And we have got pre-manufactured panelized formwork with here, in this case, 
we are not using anything else for the last, uh, started 15 years ago as a full plastic facing material and always creating a constant uh, surface. You have got panelized forms with even joints. So you see, plywood is swelling. Plywood, uh, we are pressing with the concrete pressure the water into the plywood all the time. All the time. We nail the plywood, so it's open for water. Plywood is swelling, uh, plastic is not swelling. So it has to be seen what is accepted from the architect. We can go either this way, very smooth uh, and even surface, or we have a deep end surface. It depends on the architect if he accepts it for a higher category or not. To give you an example for chop built gang forms, on the left side, with its imprint of facing joints, I would say this is a CSD3, and on the right side, uh, big panels, it depend, uh, big facing sheets, it depends on the facing sheets, and uh, the putting together the facing sheets on the, on the, on the chop built gang forms, uh, really a nice concrete surface uh, to be seen. To give you an example for the concrete surface expectation uh, for panelized formwork or for other kind of formwork, this by the way is an example from the Vienna University once again. I wanted to use uh, always the same examples and uh, a formed surface appearance drawing like it was uh, given uh, here exactly with the joints, with the vertical application, with the formwork uh, helps to convey the desired features. Once again, a possibility over a couple of floors, over the whole floors, how does this develop? Uh, it's an interesting task for a formwork uh, supplier, believe me, but uh, this is what uh, makes the uh, profession interesting. And the output, I think, even if you see that whole building and uh, many others, uh, that's what I meant and uh, mentioned before, that's architectural and uh, concrete culture, what we see, what we can do today. Furthermore, we talk about form-facing categories, and uh, you see here, FC3, it's uh, described, the criteria are holes, what kind of holes are acceptable, vibrator burns, scratches, concrete remnants, cement residue, swelling, as I mentioned, and here in SD3, uh, or in the other columns, uh, clearly defined and clearly uh, described what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. So let's summarize. We have got a couple of tables like texture, surface-wide ratio, color uniformity, surface irregularities, construction and facing joints, form-facing categories, and you see, this is just something to consider in the production process of S-cast concrete form, form concrete services. And the failure of one agreed criterion, once again, of this guide should not result in the obligation to repair deviations. You should, it's uh, widely described, furthermore in the formwork part, what kind of formwork now imagine you have got the concrete surface desired, let's say, for CSD3 or CSD4. Which kind of formula am I going to use? Can I do this uh, with used formula? Can I do it with rental formwork? Do I need new formwork? Do I need what kind of uh, form facing do I need? How does the form facing behave in the different temperature? If it's here, it's very hot. In summer, you have got 50, 45 degrees. Uh, and imagine what kind of temperature you have got uh, on the surface itself, the concrete in addition. So all these things you have to consider and it's described very clearly. Giving some examples with uh, plastic composite sheets. These plastic composite sheet, see, sheets, as I mentioned, you could weld, you could cut, you could put together uh, without having any facing joints. You can roll it like steel on the uh, yeah, like steel, you can batch it together and you get wonderful surfaces uh, like you see on that example or done for a housing project, uh, putting together panelized forms and then on top 
uh, near, uh, screwing from the back side uh, the Alpes panels or the plastic composite panels without having any joint. Form facing materials aren't described whatsoever we can get on the market today. Uh, just to give you an uh, intention, uh, uh, we have got uh, uh, plywood, we have got the full plastic forms described here uh, in detail and uh, on the right side you can see how many times approximately you might use this kind of form work to reach the required sur uh, surface quality. As shown, many factors contribute to achieving the desired concrete finish. The features and conditions of the formwork facing used play an important part. The all plastic facing Alcus has properties that give it an edge compared to other facings when it comes to formed concrete surfaces. And the new ACI guide to formed concrete surfaces gives contractors and architects a guideline they can use when talking with one another. For more information, updates and downloads, go to mefaformwork.com.